رب زدني الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان صدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Uh, last week we we talk a little bit about the hadith of Aisha which is the second hadith you guess under the chapter of istisqa. The first hadith was the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas قال خرج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم متواضعا متبذلا متخشعا مترسلا متضرعا فصلى ركعتين كما يصلي في العيد ولم يخطب خطبتكم ولم يخطب خطبتكم هذه uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went for eid prayer uh, i'm sorry uh, salat al istisqa and he went in that nature that is mentioned by abdullah ibn abbas mutabadhil mutawadian in a state of tawadu mutabadhilan in a state of uh, humility uh, not wearing very beautiful uh cloth uh in a state of need because they really need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show some help um mutarassilan the way the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam work also in a sense of humbleness uh mutakhashyan mutadarran also in a sense of khushu and tadarru wa salla rak'atayn kama yusalli fi al-eid and he prayed two rak'at just like the way he used to pray in eid wa lam yakhtub khutbatakum hadhihi so last week I, I believe we talked about the way Salat al should be prayed and we brought all of the uh, arguments of the scholars whereby we mentioned that the scholars were divided into uh, five, uh, <coughs> they're divided into uh, different madahib and Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned uh, that the, the, the suwar that were narrated by the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed aid, uh, prayed istisqa were five uh, suwar he mentioned them yawm al jum'a ala al minbar akhruju ila al masalla wa salatu wa khutbatuhu he went out and he prayed and also the second uh, surah he says yawm al jum'a ala al minbar he prayed for his isqa make dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down rain uh, on yawm al jum'a istisqa wa ala al minbar mujarradan fi yawm al jum'a also sometimes the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam there was a time he went to the minbar and he did his isqa and, and nobody, nobody narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed at that moment. And also, he says, "Qahu jalisun fil masjid." And one day he was in the masjid. Somebody came uh, and asked him, "Farafa alayhi wa Allah." He raised up his hand, uh, hand and asked Allah subhanahu wa taala for help. Uh, number five, he says, "Qahin da hajar al zayt." He did the says, "Qahin da hajar al zayt." We talk about the hajar al zayt. What are they? Uh, last week. So in that place. Um, أحجار الزيت قريبا من الزوراء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم prayed for استسقاء وهو خارج من المسجد. Out of the masjid. استسقى في بعض غزواته لما سبقه المشركون إلى الماء وهو غيث في كل مرة استسقى فيها. So six type of استسقاء were narrated by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So we talk about the controversy among the scholars who believe in this. In the majority, we have technically two views. One of them belongs to the majority, and the other one is the opinion of Abu Hanifa and uh, whoever follows him. That istisqa only exists in terms of dua, but you don't pray when you do istisqa. But uh, as the scholars have mentioned, that this opinion is rejected because of the fact that the Prophet وسلم, went out and prayed. Because this hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas is authentic. Uh, he said he went out and he prayed just like the way you are praying. So since that is authentic, 
is authentic, we have to throw away any other opinion, or at least we combine between the opinions and make use of them all. And this is what a Muslim should do. Uh, so at least if you don't want to say it is wajib, you say it is optional for someone either to make dua or to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make dua in the prayer which is, which is the best. So the second hadith which we began last week was the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. Qalat shaka an nasu ila rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quhut al matar. People complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quhut al matar, the drought. The dry season where there is no rain. So they complained that they don't have rain and they were in trouble. Uh, so when they complained to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because they believe he is the link between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his dua is quicker to be accepted than any any other dua. That was the reason why they go back to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him more. Uh, so that's show the permissibility of tawassul. This type of tawassul is okay. You have three types of tawassul. Tawassul bi asma'illahi wa sifatihi. And tawassul bi al-amal salihat. And the last one is tawassul bi dua'i rajulin salih. Tawassul bi asma'illah. You use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get what you want. Ya Rahman irhamni. So you are reminding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean, you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using one of his attributes and his name. You understand? Which, I mean, uh, meet the need you are looking for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, Rahman, you are looking for mercy. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using the name of Rahman. Ar Razak, you are looking for rizq. You understand? And there we go. So when you use the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what is called tawassul. In the sense where you're looking the means to take your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can get the acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very quickly. This is the best type of tawassul. The best one is to use the names and the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to approach Him in your dua. Even Allah, your dua will never be rejected. Insha'Allah. The second one is tawassul bi al amal salihat. When you do tawassul bi al salihat, this means when you do a righteous deed, you use this, this righteous deed to get what you want. Just like in the hadith of the people that came before us, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talk about them. So three people, they were uh, going to a place and then uh, it means it was raining, so they decided to go to one of the caves and hid in that place until then. So a rock came, as you already know, it block the way they can go out of the, the cave from it. So all of them decided, three of them, that they have to, nothing can save them except by remembering those good deeds they performed to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by using them. This is the example of tawassul by doing righteous deed. So what did they do? The first one stood up, as you already know, and he talked about his tragedy. I mean his good deed. That was the one who was very kind to the parent. So imagine he came late and he found the parent uh, already slept. But he did not wake him up. The wife is crying, the children are crying, everyone is looking for food and he has the food. He says, I would never prefer anyone over my parent. They have to wake up by themselves. They ask him, wake them up, let them drink and then we take the leftover. He says, no, I will never disturb them. Let them finish and then come and take it by themselves. So he was waiting there in front of their door until the next morning. They wake up, they woke up by themselves, they came, they found him and he gave them, they drank until they are satisfied, then he gave it to the family. He said, Ya Allah, if I was doing that for your sake, open the cave for us. And the cave opened a little bit. If he was alone, most likely Allah SWT to open it, the whole thing. But since there are some people, they have to bring some also. Everyone has to exercise his righteousness. So the second one came, and this is very strong. And he was the one who loved a woman, and look at the fitna between man and woman. كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَةَ Yusuf السلام, was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in fact a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you can see when he fell into this problem, 
A woman tried to seduce him and deceive him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we are the one who interfere and block the way and protect him. You see, Allah did not say, Yusuf, this, I mean, uh, he is beyond get, getting distracted. He says, no, we interfere. We stop the issue. Because all of the means of falling into trouble were there. Yusuf was young. And the woman, according to the stories mentioned by the, the Mufassirin and the, the people of history, she never had relationship with somebody. Because the, the husband is rich, so she was with him just because of the wealth. But she never approached man in that regard. So you see, everything is there. And she was, uh, if you can say queen, I mean, she's one of the leaders. If she did something, nothing would happen. Nobody would, would discover it. You understand? So whatever they do, you see, and the, the house is closed, and the woman is naked completely. Nothing left, as Sheikh al-Islam ibn al-Qaim mentioned. All of the means were there. And that's why this thing is one of the strongest moments whereby if you can manage to go out, the reward is so big. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, وَرَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُمْ رَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَشْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِ You have a brother who sees a woman and say, and saw by Allah. He saw a picture. He saw by Allah. And this we're talking about people that you can see them in the humble, I mean, not those gangsters, no. A normal person, he saw a picture of a woman, he saw by Allah. If he sees this woman, he believes something is going to happen. He can't be patient. And he was telling his friend, Alhamdulillah, I did not see it. You get it? So all of the means were there. So the Prophet said, this person at this moment who was invited, someone who was invited by a woman who was rich and extremely beautiful. And she opens all of the doors for him, free for him. And then he says, Inni Allah. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm telling you because the, the, the situation is not easy for someone to go out. Righteous people were destroyed because of this. You remember the story mentioned by Imam Dhabi of that righteous scholar who was seen by a sister and she went to him. So she saw him. She went and she opened some part of her chest. When he saw her, he bent his head down. He cried a lot. And she was begging him to help. And he was crying, 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 crying until the time she left and he did not even know that she left. They, he was in that place. His student went to bring for them food. When the student came and he met the sheikh crying. He met the sheikh crying. He said, sheikh, what happened? Then the sheikh realized that the woman is gone. Now it's changed. A student comes. So he quickly relaxed. Tell him, no, you know, this dunya, you remember dunya? <laughs> He said, no, Sheikh, I know how you cry when you remember this dunya and akhira, but it's not like this. He said, please, Sheikh, tell me. He told him the story. And the student cries. <coughs> you know why did he cry? Because he understands his, himself properly. He cried, he says, Alhamdulillah, I was not there. The sheikh was crying because he was tested. The woman came, and the student was crying because he was not there. Because if he was there, he doesn't think whether, whether he would be like the sheikh or not. You get it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we interfere to stop the problem from reaching Yusuf alayhi salam. كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفْ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُخْرَسِينَ What saved him was his righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. He says, because he is one of the selected and the best people in our eyes. That was just a test to teach the Ummah, whoever is hearing the, 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 the story of Yusuf, to remember that these things are tests. Be patient. Allah is going to take you out. What was the result? He was a king in the place. 
test upon a test, test upon a test. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ease after ease. And he made him leader upon those people. So this man stood up and he said, Ya Allah, this is between me and this sister, was my cousin. And he wants her to commit zina with him. She refused. Hatta ida alamat biha al haya. Until the time difficulty in life. That's why it is really bad for a sister to live alone. Because she's going to be in a state of need sometimes and there is nobody to help. What will happen? She will sell her image and her honor. Wallahi, this is, this, is, this is really, really bad to hear that there is a sister who is living alone. A brother said there was a sister who used to be decent, but they heard that she is having some illegal relationship with somebody. People, they used to come and pay and do that, this type of prostitution. So they decided to check whether it is true or not. And they went, what did they find? They found that it is true. And then they told her that we are not here to do this. But we are just here to see why. Why did you do this? The husband died. And no family to support. And she has a lot of children. And the community is not helping. She had no option except to do this according to her. That's where you understand the reason why Islam says a woman has to be with someone. With the parent. If the parents are not there, they go to the husband. If the husband died or divorce happened, she goes back to who? To the parent. To protect her interests and her honor. So this woman, she was like that until the time of need comes. She really need money to survive. So the man was there. And then he went, she went to him, she begged him. He said, no problem, but I have to get what I want. And that's really too much. Because he mentioned in that dua, before he mentioned the dua, in the Tawassul, he says, Ya Allah, I sit on her, the place of a man on top of his wife. And then she looks at him and cry. And she said, Ittaqillah. This word really works with him. She was crying and she said, Fear Allah. La tafuddal khatama illa bihaqqihi. I mean, don't you ever go through things that Allah SWT has set up a system for it without going through that system. There is a dowry, there is marriage, let us do that. But don't, not in this way. It was too much, you see, at the same time she has a need. She cannot say no, but she doesn't want. So when she said, Ittaqillah, the man reacted, he stood up. Allah is very really strong. He stood up, that's why scholars, when they mentioned, they said, this is bigger than all of them. Because at that moment, only Allah can, turn, can take him away. So he leaves the place, and he gave her the money for the sake of Allah. He says, Ya Allah, if I was doing that for your sake, help us to go out of this place. And Allah SWT opened the door a little, but they cannot go out, because there is somebody else waiting waiting the third the third person he stood up he was also amazing he hired some people to do something for him in the farm and they did and he gave each and every one of them his wage except one he came after a period of time and the man what did he do he took that money that belongs to that person and he grow it for him he did business he bought sheep they become a lot of sheep cows a lot of cows camels a lot of camels so he kept on buying things, slaves and many other things, until they become hundreds of them. So when the man came after a period of time, and he went to him, he said, brother, do you recognize me? He said, yes. You are so and so and so, he said, yes. He said, I'm here to take my right. He said, I'm here to take my right. And they will come tomorrow and tell you human right. Allah <laughs> Mustan. 
If you shout a little next to him, he reports you are disturbing his house. Allah understand. May Allah guide them. So he grew the money. So he told the man, uh, when the man talked to him, he said, Come. He went to the valley of uh, cows and sheep. and So he told him, All these are yours. He says, He said, Brother, I'm not here for you to make mockery on me. This is wrong. I'm here to take my right. That little amount of money that I left with you, please give me my money. He says, no, this is what happened. And the man was so stingy. He packed everything without leaving a single sheep for him. And he did not complain. He did not change his mind and said, no, brother, come and take your money. He let him go. He said, Ya Allah, if I was doing that for your sake, open the door for us. And Allah SWT opened the whole, the, the whole thing and they went out. This is the power of Tawassul. When you use your righteous deed to approach Allah SWT and get what you want, Allah SWT will take it. Not because Allah SWT needs those righteous deeds. But Allah SWT is going to become happy with you for doing things that He wants. So whenever you do righteous deed, remember your needs and use the righteous deed and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about your need, bathe in Allah, you will get it. This is the attitude of the righteous people. Juraj, when he was in trouble, he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prayed first, then he made dua. And look at the ijaba, which is so quick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even plays karama in his hand. He look at the baby that, is, that was attributed to him wrongly. He hit the stomach of the baby and said to, it, to, to the baby, who is your father? And the baby who was newly, newly, uh, newly born talked to the people and tell them, my father is Ra'il Ghanam. That's the power of Tawassul if you do it correctly and properly. So these two types of Tawassul are halal. The last one also is halal. Although it is not recommended, but it's good. I mean, it's okay. When you do it, it's halal. It's permissible. Which is to ask Allah SWT by using the dua of a righteous person. For example, you look at someone who you believe is more righteous than you ask him to make dua for you that's okay ask him to make dua for you that's okay and this is how it should be understood not to make dua by using the name of a righteous person no the prophet never did that and companions of the prophet sallallahu never did that when he died and they decided to Ask Allah SWT to help them with rain. Umar said, Ya Allah, whenever we are affected by qahat, the drought, we used to ask your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make dua for us. After this, you send down the rain. As Ibn Waqayb mentioned that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never be disappointed by Allah SWT when he asked for rain. Allah SWT usually send it immediately. So he said, we used to ask the Prophet to make dua, but now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead. Ya Allah, here we asking you to make dua by asking one of the family members of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to help us to make the dua. It was much easier for them to say, Ya Allah, help us with dua because of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they did not. He just say, Ya Allah, we're going to use Abbas to stand up and ask. And he says, come here Abbas, immediately. He says, stand up here Abbas and make dua for us. And Abbas stood up and he made dua for them. Allah SWT to send down the rain. This is how Tawassul should be made. He didn't use the name of anyone, including the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you can use the name of Allah SWT or the attribute of Allah SWT is better for you. So those who believe that you can use the name of someone, it is even better for them to be on the safe side since, I mean, the, the, the scholars and the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is how they did it. It's better for them to be on the safe side and make dua by using the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa or any of his, his attribute. You get it. So this is uh, Tawassul. You can do Tawassul with the name of Allah, as we said, and you can do Tawassul with the name of, uh, uh, with the attribute of Allah, and you can do Tawassul by using your good deed, and you can do Tawassul by using the dua of a righteous person. I mentioned something about this uh, last 
a category of Tawheed, I mean, not to be the best way to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah really loves to see you making the dua. Because dua is an act of worship. If you ask somebody to make it on your behalf, you're losing. That person will get the reward and you're losing. And your dua will be quickly accepted, bathing in Allah. Much better if you ask someone to make dua for you. That's why in some circumstances when they ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make dua, the personal dua, he tell them, make, when, especially when they are affected by a test, he will tell them, be patient, it's better for you. He will not make the dua and ask them to be patient. But if they want the dua, he will make it uh, for them and Allah SWT will give them what they want. So as I was saying, this is halal. You can do it. Uh, any type of tawassul, which the scholars have mentioned among those three types, you can take it and approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be idhnillahi, your dua will be quickly accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaka al-nasu ila Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-quhut al-matar fa'amara bimimbarin fawudi'a lahu bimusalla. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded someone to bring a member so they brought the member and they put it in the musalla, an open area that they used to pray in that place. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised them a day that he's going to go out with them to pray the prayer. And then the Prophet So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out when the sun comes out. I mean, the time the prayer is halal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out and then he prayed with the people. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sat on the member فَكَبَّرَ وَحَمِدَ الله. So he said the takbir Allahu Akbar and he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he made the khutbat al haja So either he made the takbir or this one is talking about the khutbat al haja إِنَّ الْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِنُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ ثُمَّ قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ شَكَوْتُمْ جَدْبَ دِيَارِكُمْ وَقَدْ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ أَن تَدْعُوهُ he says, you complain to me the drought, the dryness of your houses. I mean, you don't have rain. You, look, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down rain. وَقَدْ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ أَن تَدْعُوهُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to, to make dua for, for him. وَوَعَدَكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَجِيبَ لَكُمْ And he promised you to accept your dua. Allahu Akbar. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِيبْ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, make dua, he will answer it. He really loves to see you making dua. Let us alan nabunayya adama hajatan wa salil ladhi abwabuhu la tuhjabu. Allahu yagdabu interakta su'alahu wa bunayyu adama hina yus'alu yagdabu. He said, don't ask man anything. Ask the one that his doors will never be closed. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu yagdabu interakta su'alahu. If you don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be angry with you. The children of Adam, when you ask him, he will be angry. So why do you want to humiliate yourself? You ask him, he will get angry. You don't ask him, he will be happy. And Allah, when you ask him, he will be happy with you. You don't ask him, he will get angry. Because that means you're arrogant. He says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسَّجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ إِبَارِتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ He says, ask me, I will answer, answer you your call and will respond to you. So those who are showing arrogance and ibadah, say, ibadah here means dua or the normal ibadah which includes the dua also. Say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be very angry with them and take them to hell. Understand? So if you don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be angry with you. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything, including the simple thing that you you think like you shouldn't go directly to Allah SWT. He loves to see you because when you ask the small things, you're showing Allah SWT, even in this issue, I cannot control myself, I need your help. Even the simple things, I cannot get it if you don't help me in it. Yeah. يفعل ما يريد. And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, الحمد لله رب العالمين. All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى رب العالمين. The Rabb of the Alam. 
Alam is anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's the creator and the controller of the Alam. He's the one who creates and he's the owner of the Alam. Alam means anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he started with this, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the beneficent, the most merciful. These two words are the same, but when they're put together in one place, each and every one of them will carry different meaning. As the scholars have mentioned, Ar-Rahman will be Dhu'l-Rahmatu, Dhu'l-Rahmatil Wasi'ah. The one whose mercy is so great and so big, in such a way it encompasses everything, all of his creation. Everyone is taken from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who rejects and the one who rejects, both are receiving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on this name, Ar-Rahman. But when you talk about Ar-Rahim being connected to Ar-Rahman, it will have the same meaning with a little a bit of increase. So that one is Dhul Rahmatul Wasi'ah, and the other one is Dhul Rahmatul Wasi'ah. The one whose mercy is continuous for the believers alone. So here on earth, everyone is going to get the mercy. But when you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one who will receive the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a good believer. That's the meaning of Ar-Rahim. That's why he says, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Say, so, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki wa Middin. Maliki wa Middin or Maliki wa Middin. Two narrations here. You understand? You have two narrations here. Among the scholars, there is someone who is saying Maliki wa Middin, and there is another one saying Maliki wa Middin. This is al qurat al Uh So some scholars, some Qurra, read Maliki wa Middin, like Hafs Maliki wa Middin, Warsh saying, Warsh is saying Maliki wa Middin. So Malik means the owner of the Day of Judgment. Maliki wa Middin is the king of the Day of Judgment. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> so Malik means the one who owns, and Malik means the one who is controlling. So Allah SWT has both, so that no gap will be left. Because it is not necessary for someone to be the king that he is the owner of everything. You can be the king. You see the king here in this place, he is not the one who owns everything in this place. You get it? So it's not necessary for someone to be the king and also it is not necessary for you to be a, an owner and at the same time you are the king. So Allah is trying to combine both for himself. He is the Malik and he is the owner. He owns the Day of Judgment and also he is the king in the Day of Judgment. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrict himself in this verse saying that he is the one who owns the Day of Judgment? We all believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything. He owns the rest of the days. But why the Day of Judgment? Allahu alam, the scholars mentioned that the reason why Allah wants to specify this day because this is the day the real king is going to appear. Because in this life you have a lot of kings. Everyone is claiming the, the sovereignty and the leadership. Everyone is king. This one is king, this one is king. But when it comes to the hereafter, who is the real king? All of those pe people, they will release themselves from any type of leadership. The title will be gone. And the only one who will remain is the real king, the king of kings. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the kings. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَهُمْ بَارِزُونَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمَ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring everyone. Everyone is going to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the grave. لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ No one is going to be hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see every one of them. So they will be presented back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of us, we, come, we will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the people and the angels and the jinns and animals and everyone, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ The kingdom belongs to who today? Who is holding the kingdom today? Some scholars said nobody will be able to speak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he himself will say, لِلَّهِ الْوَحِدِ الْقَهَارِ it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and the only one and the irresistible. No one can resist him. That's the meaning of al-Qahar. The one, whenever he takes something, he will break it down. 
So Allah SWT will say to them, to all of the creation, liman al-mulku liyawma. Who is holding the kingdom today? In some narration, according to some scholars, everyone who is found in that place, angels and human beings and jinns and everyone, they will open their mouth and say, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is all, the, the one and the only one, the irresistible. So you can see today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, He caused everyone to forget His kingdom. So the real king today, and the real king in the hereafter is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was like that before the existence of the creation and he will remain like this after the existence of the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never got any of his attributes before, because of the existence of somebody. He was khaliq, like Imam al-Tahawi said, he was khaliq before the existence of makhluqat. His name was al-khaliq. The name was not initiated after he creates. You understand? It is just a confirmation of that attribute that was with him, Fil Azal. And there we go. All of the attributes of Allah SWT were like that. So that's the reason why Allah SWT said that because he is the real king. And the Prophet wasallam said, Allah SWT will take the heavens and put them in one of his fingers. And he will take the earth and put them in one of his fingers. And the water and the trees and all of these things, one of the things, Allah SWT will keep on doing this. Each and every one of them in a finger. And then the Prophet wasallam said, he will shake them. This is Allah SWT shaking something. He will shake them. And then he will say, Anal Malik, Aina Muluk Al Ard. I am the real king. Where are those kings that used to talk? All of these Jabbarun, Mutakabirun, where are they? Why are they so silent? Allah SWT will keep on shaking them and ask. So now he's not even shaking the one thing. No, he will take everything and, sh and, and shake it. So the real leadership and the kingdom, the real kingdom belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is the king. He is the one who creates everything and he is the one who owns them. The real owner is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that's the reason why Allah SWT, because in, on this day, nobody will claim anything. In this life, you have even somebody take, somebody taking the right of Allah SWT, putting, putting it on himself. You have Firaun believes that he is Allah. You have Numrud believes that he is Allah. And you have throughout the history, people coming, telling us that they are Allah. And even up to today, you have some people, they think their own attitude and their manners can elevate them to become Allah. They have certain types of adhkar, they will say it, and they think at the end of the day they will have, they will have this divinity. Waliyadu billah. Still some people still believing in this. So all of these, I mean claims, are going to perish in the hereafter. Nobody will come back and think of them at all. The kullim ri'im minhum yawmaidin sha'nu yuni. Whoever you see on that day, he has his own affairs which makes him busy think of others. So you're not talking about kingdom or leadership. Nobody will think of this. So Maliki Omiddin means the one who owns the Day of Judgment. Maliki Omiddin means the king, the real king of the Day of Judgment. And that's Allah. He owns a day in the sun and also he is the king on that day. Maliki Omiddin. That's the day of Deen. A Deen is not religion. Deen here means Al Jaza. Araita Ladi Kadhibu, the Deen. It can be Deen, the Deen, Deen, or Araita Ladi Kadhibu, the Deen, Aibil Jaza. Maliki Omid Deen means Yomul Jaza, the day of compensation. The day whereby everyone is going to be compensated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he did. In Khairan, for Khairan, for Mayyam al Mithqala, the Ratin Khairan Yara, or Mayyam al Mithqala, the Ratin Shadran Yara. Whatsoever you, you, you did. That's why they call it Akhwafu Ayatin. In Akhwafu Ayat, if you kitab Allahi Hadi. Whatsoever you did, even if it is like an atom, you're going to see it. If it is good, you will see it. If it is bad, you will see it. Mali had al kitab ilayu ghadiru sagiratan wala kabiratan illa ahsaha. The criminals are going to look at the book and see the way the book is so comprehensive. Mentioning everything they did. 
and they will say, what is wrong with this book? Even this type of simple things, it is recorded by, by this book. So beware of this and remember this day that Allah SWT said you will be brought back to be rewarded based on what you did. The good ones and the evil ones. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَعَزِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِشَةِ الرَّاضِيَةِ If the sight of the righteousness is heavy, you will be taken to paradise. But if unfortunate to be taken place, then you will be taken to hell. Allah SWT mentioned, may Allah SWT protect us from hell. So Malik Yawmiddin, Allah SWT is the one who owns that day. So the one who is going to judge people is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Ad-Din means al jaza كَمَا تَقُولِ الْعَرَبِ كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانُ yeah. The way you deal with others, this is the way they are going to deal with you. You take loan from them, they are going to take from you. Whatever you did, they are going to reply you with the same thing. So what you did, Allah SWT is going to give you something of this nature in the hereafter. Malik Yawmiddin, and then he says, La ilaha illallah yaf'alu ma yurid. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the doer of whatsoever he wishes. That's Allah. Fa'alu lima yurid. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes must take place. Yeah. So we have our own Mashiach, but ma tasha'una illa an Allah. Your Mashiach follows the Mashiach of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does what he, he, he wants. Allah, Allahumma anta Allah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa began his dua. So you see the tawassul, he was making tawassul using the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to approach his dua. That's the best dua. He shouldn't make dua without preceding the dua with these type of things. First of all, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second of all, make salah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Salam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa After this, then make istighfar. Then make your dua. If you're having wudu and you're facing qibla, and especially when you're making the dua in one of those moments that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called them the moment of ijaba Ibn al-Qayyim said this type of dua uh, this type of dua is likely not to be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is very 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 I mean uh, strong dua and it is not easy for you to find this dua being rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started with this and he says la ilaha illa la ilaha illa Allah Allahumma anta Allah. Ya Allah, you are Allah. Allah means al malu al malu means the only one to be worshipped. That's the meaning of Allah. Ruhiya. It means al malu The only one that was supposed to be worshipped. Al-ilah, Allah, al-ilah means al malu The one who is supposed to be worshipped alone. Without associating any partner with him. La ilaha illa ant. There is none to be worshipped except you. Allahumma anta Allah, la ilaha illa anta, anta al-ghani wa nahdu al -fakra. You are the richest and we are all poor. Whatsoever you see in this life, you and your, your property and your wealth and whatsoever you have are Allah's property. So he owns everything. Who is richer than him then? Nobody. So when you go back to Allah SWT, try to have this feeling with you. Then inshallah your dua will be quickly accepted. نحن الفقراء وانت الغني أنزل علينا الغيث يا الله help us with, uh, with rain وجعل ما أنزلت علينا قوة وبلاغا إلى حين And also ya Allah make that which you reveal to us this is the rain you send down the rain please help us and send the rain the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said and also make this rain to be a means of strength and strengthen us with this rain when you send it Make it barakah and blessing from you so that we can gain our strength. And strength and also something that we can take and make use of it throughout our life until the, the, the appointed term that you fix for each and every one of us. So after this, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised up his, his hand. So he kept on raising up the hand until people started seeing the, uh, the, 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 the light of his armpit. So when we say that, it's not like the way some people go up. No. 
even when you do this, some, the one who is at the side can see what is, what is that. ثُمَّ حَوَّلَ إِلَى النَّاسِ ظَهْرَهُ And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced uh, his friend, the Qibla, and, pe and he put his back, back toward the people. وَقَالَ بَرِدَاهُ And he turned his, his garment. So make it upside down, change the direction of the, the garment. So they said this is just a fa'ul. They're looking for a change. So this is just a fa'ul. وَهُوَ رَافِعٌ يَدَيْهِ And he, changed, he turned it upside down while he was raising up his hand. ثُمَّ أَكْبَلَ عَلَى النَّاسِ And then he faced people. وَنَزَلْ And then he came down. فَصَلَّى رَكَعَتَيْنِ So he prays two rakat. فَأَنْشَأَ اللَّهُ سَحَابَةً and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after this dua, look at the dua, very powerful dua, and it works as usual. So when he did that, and he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this, فَأَنْشَ اللَّهُ سَحَابَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a cloud in the, in the sky. So they saw it. فَرَعَدَتْ The zara'ad, the sound that comes, the, the thunder. وَبَرَقَتْ The bark is the lightning. Just came now, and it kept on producing the sound and then the light kept on coming. Allahu Akbar. That's the power of the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thumma amtarat. And then it sent down the rain to them. So this is the narration of Aisha and this shows that yes, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really prayed. Uh, what do you call it? He prayed uh, the salat al -isasqa. It's not only about dua, we can also make the prayer. And you can see also at the beginning he made dua. Yeah. So that's why if you can remember the controversy last week, when shall we make the khutbah? Is it first or at the end? And is there any khutbah or not? So this is one of the evidences they use. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talk in the beginning. So some people, they just suffice with this. He said the khutbah should be at that moment. وفي الحديث دليل على مشروعية رفع اليدين عند الدعاء. so the hadith shows that it is part of the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to raise up your hand when you make dua. in the sun when you make dua you raise up your hand. so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was making dua and he raised up his hand. ولكنه يبالغ في رفعه ما في الاستسقاء. so you just raise up your hand like Ibn Uthaymin mentioned just moderate in the line of your chest. In the sun, not that far or you open, put them all together and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No need to raise them up. But if you're making istisqa, you do like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you fi raf'ihima, you raise them up more wider. وَلَكِنَّهُ يُبَالِغُ فِي رَفْعِهِمَا فِي الْإِسْتِسْقَاءِ حَتَّى يُسَاوِ بِهِمَا وَجْهَهُ You raise them up until you put them next to your face. As I said, not to go but he is not supposed to go beyond the head. وَقَدْ ثَبَتَ رَفْعِ الْيَدَيْنِ عِنْدَ الدُّعَيْ فِي عِدَّةْ أَحَادِيثِ Imam al-Sana'ani said, we have from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it is sunnah for you to raise up your hand in many ahadith. وَصَنَّفَ الْمُنْذِرِيُّ فِي ذَلِكَ جُزْأً And one of the scholars also write a book on this issue. وَقَالَ النَّوَوِيُّ قَدْ أَجْمَعَتْ قَدْ جَمَعَتُ he says, I try, I compile around, around 30 cases where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talks about raising up the hand. From just this one are uh, extracted from uh, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim or one of them alone. وَذَكَرَ فِي أَوَاخِرِ بَابِ صِفَةِ الصَّلَاةِ مِنْ شَرْحِ الْمُهَذَّبِ وَذَكَرَهَا And he mentioned uh, all of these uh, narrations uh, in the last uh, ch chapter of the prayer from the book Al-Muhadhab. It's one of the books of Shafi'i Madhab. وَأَمَّا حَدِيثُ أَنَسٍ فَفِي نَفْي رَفْعِ الْيَدَيْنِ فِي غَيْرِ الْإِسْتِسْقَاءِ فِي نَفْي رَفْعِ الْيَدَيْنِ فِي غَيْرِ الْإِسْتِسْقَاءِ فَمُرَادِ بِهِ نَفْي الْمُبَالَغَةِ لَا نَفْي أَصِلِ الْرَفْعِ he says, as for the hadith of Anas, the one that says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not raise up his hand, Anas was trying to talk about exaggerating in the way someone should raise up 
his hand. He said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never did that. So I mean, Sanani said he was talking about al mubalagha someone increasing and going beyond the limit when he raised up his hand. So he wasn't talking about the the the, the origin of raising of the hand when you make dua. This is established by, as he mentioned Nawawi, uh, uh, around 30 hadiths from Sahihain or from one of them. وَأَمَّا كَيْفِيُّ تَقَلْبِ الرِّدَاءِ فَيَأْتِي عَنِ الْبُخَارِ جَعَلُ الْيَمِينِ جَعَلُ الْيَمِينِ عَلَى الشِّمَالِ As for the way you make it, he says, uh, uh, it will come, inshallah, narrated by Imam Bukhari that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he put the right on the left, left on the right. وَزَادَ بْنُ مَا جَاءَ وَبْنُ خُزَيْمَا جَعَلَ الشِّمَالَ عَلَى الْيَمِينِ and uh, there is a narration that says he put the, the, the left on the, on the right. وفي روايات اللي أبي داود جعل عاطفة الأيمن على آقه على آتقه الأيسر وعاطفة الأيسر على آتقه الأيمن. So all of these are talking about the same thing. Taking the left, put it on the right, and the right, put it on, on the left. وفي روايات اللي أبي داود أنه كان عليه خميصة سوداء فأراد فأراد أن يأخذ بأسفلها ويجعله أعلىها فلما ثقلت عليه قلبها على عاتقه. And in another narration he was wearing a cloth which is very thick, so he decided to take the top and put it on the uh, the bottom and so it was so heavy. So and then he just put the right on the left and left on the on the right. الله أعلم. فلما ثقلت عليه قلبها على عاتق ويشرو للناس أن يحولوا معه and people also they are supposed to do that when you see the imam doing it you also follow the imam in that عالما أخرجه أحمد because of the narration that Imam Ahmad narrated which say beloved حول الناس معه and people also they turn their their garments just like the way the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الليث ابن سعد وابو يوسف إنه يختص يَخْتَصُ التَّحْوِيلُ بِالْإِمَامِ And some scholars, like Ibn Sa'ad and Abu Yusuf, uh, the student of Imam Abu Hanifa, they said the only one who is supposed to do it is the Imam. وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لَا تُحَوُّلُ النِّسَاءِ Some of them said, women cannot, cannot do it all. <laughs> Allah wa But if they have, why not? Everyone doing behind the Imam, they also did. Until we find something from the Prophet sallallahu I mean taking women out of the, the issue. Of course, if they're wearing a lot of things in. Because man, you can take your garment if you don't have anything, no problem. But a woman cannot do that. But if she has something extra on top of her, that means if they go, they have their abaya and their niqab, their everything, they bring some garment to go with it. Plain cloth, piece of cloth. When the imam turns, they also turn. And that's it. وَأَمَّا وَقْتُ تَحْوِيلِ فَإِنَّ اسْتِقْبَالِهِ الْقِبْلَةِ The time uh, they should uh, exchange the, the side of the, 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 the garment should be the time the Imam is facing, facing the Qibla. Well, the Muslim in Anahu Lama Arada and Yedru is Takbal al Qibla to Wahawala Ridahu. Imam Muslim narrated that when the Prophet Sallallahu decided to make a uh, dua, he faced the Qibla and also he turns the, 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 the garment. وفي الحديث دليل على أن صلاة الاستسقاء ركعتان. so from this hadith we learn that the صلاة الاستسقاء is two ركعات. وهو قول الجمهور and this is the opinion of the majority. وقال الهادي أربعون بتسليمتين. الإمام الهادي said you prayed four ركعات with two تسليم. pray two تسليم two and تسليم. وجه قوله بأنه صلى الله عليه وسلم يسقى في الجمعة كما في قصة العرب والجمعة بالخطبتين بمنزلة أربع ركعات. He says because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was doing a sasqa in on Friday and Juma if you put the khutba according to some opinion khutba two khutba is like two rakat. So two rakat and two khut khut khutbas how many rakat then four. That's why they say the khutba is just like the completion of dhuhr. This is for someone who believes that Juma is replacing Zuhur, which is also rejected by the, some scholars. But I Mafihi said it is not, I mean, hidden that this explanation is so weak. It is very obvious to know that this explanation is so weak and unacceptable. 
وقد ثبت من فعله صلى الله عليه وسلم ركعتان ركعتان كما عرفت من هذا الحديث والذي قبله ولما ذهبت اليه الحنفيه الى انه لا يشرع التحويل آه وقد افاده هذا الحديث الماضي وزاد المصنف تقويه الاستدلال على ثبوت التحويل بقوله آه وقصه التحويل في صحيح. So he says it is already established based on strong hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that uh, he did pray two rakat not four rakat he prayed two rakat whoever mentioned they will say two rakat two rakat together with the dua Allahu alam so inshallah we stop here next week when I come inshallah we can take more bismillah subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalala ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuhu